To write the Lewis structure for K2SO4, potassium sulfate, we need to recognize that potassium is a metal, and then S and O, those are nonmetals. In fact, they're a group of nonmetals called a polyatomic ion. This one is the sulfate ion. When we have a metal and nonmetals together, we have an ionic compound. And the metals, they transfer their electrons, their valence electrons, to the nonmetals. So we write K here and then over here, and we'll put the sulfate ion right between them. So we said potassium was a metal and this polyatomic ion that's made up of nonmetals. Potassium, that's in group one on the periodic table. It has one valence electron. So this metal will transfer its electron to the nonmetals. So when potassium transfers or loses its electron to the sulfate here, it loses a negative charge. That means it has a positive charge. This potassium, it also loses an electron, transfers it to the SO4 here, and it has a positive charge. So these positive charges here, they're attracted to the negative. They're opposite charges, so they're attracted, and that's what's forming the ionic bond between the potassium and the sulfate here. We have these brackets between them to show that the electrons were lost from the potassiums and gained by the sulfate, that they're not sharing electrons like in a covalent bond. The Lewis structure we've drawn here for K2SO4 is what we call a formula unit. With potassium sulfate, an ionic compound, it's a crystal, so it's made up of a regularly repeating pattern of these formula units. What we've drawn is one formula unit of that crystal. This is Dr. B with the Lewis structure for K2SO4, potassium sulfate. Thanks for watching.